Between the Lines Live at SandusskyRegister.com. I'm going to be joined today by Mike and Shannon Limberios and their son Mike Limberios to talk about the recent decision by Sandusky County Special Prosecutor to seek exhumation of their son Jacob's body for a second time. Uh, Dean Henry um, requested that action yesterday and he appears to be following through with it uh, with the funeral home, Ransom Funeral Home in Castalia. We're also going to try and reach Dean Henry. We believe he's expecting our call and attorney Dan Magucki is with us. He represents the Limberios family. We're going to come right back. We are open to questions from the audience, but we're going to have an opportunity to listen to Mike and Shannon and Mike uh, Limberios about their loss and what this decision means to their family. We're going to take a short break for a message from our sponsor, Terra Community College, Terra State Community College. For more information, go to terra.edu. We'll be back in just a few moments. Get in touch with your inner scientists. Transfer degrees in science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine at Terra State Community College. Start here, go anywhere. Learn more at terra.edu. Are you the only one still using the book? Get found at firelands411.com. Half of the internet users today will use a search engine to find a business. Make sure you're found at firelands411.com, an all-local business directory with phone numbers, addresses, and more. Your customers are looking for you. Claim your free listing today at firelands411.com. Find your passion in healthcare at Terra State Community College. Start here, go anywhere. Learn more at terra.edu. We're back. This is Between the Lines, and I'm joined now by Mike and Shannon Limberios and their son Michael Limberios Jr. to talk about the decision yesterday by Special Prosecutor Dean Henry to seek a second exhumation of your son Jacob, uh, Jacob Limberios' body. And we wanted to have you on the program today to get your reaction to that decision and any thoughts you might have on this move forward by Special Prosecutor Dean Henry. Um, do you welcome the decision? No. 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 And uh, what concerns you about a, a second exhumation and a second autopsy? I don't, I don't understand why when they didn't even test the tissue sample from Dr. Webb yet, sent that up to Lucas County, have her either agree or disagree with Weck's findings. Or, Dr. Or Dr. Weck performed an autopsy in September. Yes. And in February provided Sandusky County officials a tissue sample yep. that he has ruled, judged, to be incontrovertible evidence that Jacob was not holding the gun when he was killed. Correct. Um, Dean Henry indicated that they would accept that tissue sample and have it tested by the Lucas County Coroner's Office, and he hasn't given you any indication whether that was done, but we did receive, the register received confirmation today yep. from Dr. Cynthia Beezer that she never did conduct a test. Correct. So what you're saying is you, you, you think this avenue should be explored more fully before making a decision to exhume your son's body. If, she, if there's something that she sees with that tissue sample, Matt, that she believes that there is a reason that she needs to see Jacob again, then by all means. But give her the opportunity to, to, to look at that and, and, and before, you, before you dig Jacob up. And it's upsetting to even think that your son is going to be dug up for a second time. Yeah. I, there, we don't even know what they've done. They're not telling us what they've done. I give them 18 shells, 357 Magnum shells, out of Jacob's gun safe to have tested for ballistics. Mm -hmm. During the conversation that 
O'Connell had with Brady, he never mentions any ballistic testing, just DNA testing. And you're referring to the, it's about a 72 minute interview that Detective O'Connell conducted with Brady Gasser, yeah. who was a friend, to, a friend of Jacob's. Yes. And Brady has been involved with a Facebook campaign, Justice for Jake, and a planned protest at Sandusky County Courthouse on Thursday at 9 a.m. Yeah, Brady and Luke, Luke Eddy are responsible for it. Yes, and Detective o Sean O'Connell, who has been the lead investigator in this, in, in this second investigation, interviewed Brady for about 72 minutes and detailed his findings during that conversation, although many of his statements appear to be contradictory. Is that right? Yes. And some of those contradictory statements you just mentioned, uh, he also mentioned during that conversation that they were awaiting a test on the gun that would determine who held the gun last. Is that correct? I don't know that they were waiting on that test. I think he said to Brady that there was one more thing he needed to do, mm -hmm. or one more thing that had to be done, and it's obviously to dig my son up. It's the exhumation. Yeah. And we had uh, contacted Dean Henry, uh, the Register has contacted Dean Henry uh, many times during the past few months since he was uh, appointed to be special prosecutor in addition to serving as defense counsel in a civil litigation. Um, but he has provided uh, no response to our inquiries of, of any real value. Um, he seems more angry that, or disenchanted with our coverage in general from the register, although he hasn't really detailed what his concerns about our coverage is. We talked to Dean, well, we email exchange with Dean Henry this morning, and we uh, suggested that you and your family would like to talk to him today. He agreed to that, it appears, as long as attorney Dan McGookie was present, and Mr. McGookie is here. Um, so we're gonna make that call in a few minutes, unless there's anything else. Shannon, did you wanna offer any reaction to the decision? I was stunned when I got the email mm -hmm. yesterday. Who did you receive the email from? Dan, I think. Okay. It came from Dan. Dan McGookie? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the email was just an attachment with an order from Dr. Wookie. Correct. Uh, since uh, Dean Henry is representing Dr. Wookie, it might be safe to assume, but we'll ask him whether he, in fact, is the one who is requesting the exhumation. It appears that way, especially with Detective O'Connell's comments that there was one last thing to do. Michael, did you have any thoughts about this? I'm sure you've been involved with the family as this has moved forward. Did you have any thoughts you wanted to share? Just <clears throat> hearing that they're even thinking about digging my brother up again, just. Right. And where is your brother buried? Uh, the Castellia Cemetery. So there's a suggestion that the township trustees would have to sign off on this as well as the Erie County Prosecutor, but Mr. Henry appears to be moving forward with the exhumation plan. You had talked to the funeral home today, Shannon? Mm -hmm. And what did you learn after talking to them? Um, that they're planning to exhume Jake on Monday, mm -hmm. take him to Toledo, um, and either do the autopsy on Tuesday or Wednesday, and then he'll be brought back after that. Now, when Dr. Weck did the autopsy in September, it was a one-day process. Um, I believe uh, Special Prosecutor Dean Henry is probably watching this program, so I, I think that sets it up with some of your concerns, and we'll take a short break right now and come back and we'll make that phone call. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. We'll be back in just a few moments after this message from our sponsor. Get in touch with your inner scientist. Transfer degrees in science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine at Terra State Community College. Start here, go anywhere. Learn more at terra.edu. Are you the only one still using the book? Get found at firelands411.com. 
Half of the internet users today will use a search engine to find a business. Make sure you're found at firelands411.com, an all local business directory with phone numbers, addresses, and more. Your customers are looking for you. Claim your free listing today at firelands411.com. Find your passion in healthcare at Terra State Community College. Start here, go anywhere. Learn more at terra.edu. We're back. This is Between the Lines Live at SandusskyRegister.com. We're going to make a phone call now to Special Prosecutor Dean Henry uh, to just uh, share your thoughts with him. He uh, told us earlier today, told me in an email earlier today, that he'd be willing to take this phone call as long as Attorney Dan McGookie was present. Mr. McGookie is here with us, so we'll go ahead and make that call now. Are you ready? Ready as we're going to be. Okay. All right, here goes. Mr. Henry, it's Matt Westerhold at the Sandusky Register. How are you, Mr. Westerhold? Very good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. We're live on Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com, and I'm here with Mike and Shannon Limberios and their son Michael Jr. Limberios, as well as attorney Dan McGookie. Um, thank you for taking our phone call. Uh, Mike or Mr. McGookie, uh, do you want to open this up with uh, Mr. Ho Mr. Uh, Henry? Mr. Westerhold, let me save you some time. Okay. Uh, you, you know what my position is on making public comment regarding the Lumberios investigation. If Mr. and Mrs. Lumberios have particular questions for me and they'd like to meet with me with their counsel, I'll be happy to do that. But I'm not making any public comment regarding the investigation. Perhaps they could share with you their concerns, and they won't ask oh, questions they then. Can, they can do that uh, in the privacy of my office or Mr. McGookie's office, but uh, I'm not going to waste their time or your time or anyone else's time having a one-way conversation with you present. Uh, I told you when I emailed you this morning that any time that they want to sit and meet with me, they are welcome to do that as long as they have their counsel present. That is an invitation I've extended since the day I was appointed. That invitation remains open, but I'm not going to have a conversation with them, with you present uh, in front of, you know, everyone. Um, I, guess, I guess we had a miscommunication because I indicated to you earlier in the day that we would make this phone call and you invited it. Um, I did not invite a phone call from you, sir. I have repeatedly in writing okay. and otherwise told you right. that I'm not going to make public comment regarding the investigation. If there was a miscommunication, it was on your end. You told me that the Lumberioses wanted to speak with me. I immediately emailed you back and told you that that wasn't going to happen unless their counsel was present, and I'm not going to do this publicly. And I don't know how much clearer I can be about that. I've been yeah. polite and professional about that. I've told you why I'm not making comment. I've stuck with that, and you're apparently thinking that I must be kidding about this. I've told you I'm not going to make any public comments regarding the investigation out of respect for Mr. and Mrs. Limberios. If they have specific questions that they want to put to me with their legal counsel present, I will be happy to meet with them face to face and I'll answer the questions that I feel are appropriate to answer and to those that I don't wish to answer, I'll let them know that and I'll be honest with them about that. But I'm not having a conversation with you and I'm certainly not having a public conversation regarding an ongoing investigation into Jacob's death. I believe the uh, uh, Detective O'Connell indicated the investigation was completed back in February. This investigation isn't completed, Mr. Westerholt, until I say it's completed. I've been put in charge of the investigation, and Detective O'Connell and I have been working together. But as you well know, there are things yet that need to be done in this case. That's not the indication Detective O'Connell gave the Limberioses in February. Well, sir, uh, lots of 
things have happened in this matter since February, but I'm telling you that the investigation is not done. A final report won't issue until the investigation is done. And as I've repeatedly told you, when the investigation is concluded and I've authored my final report, then everyone will be able to see what we've done. Before that time, I'm not making comment regarding the status of the investigation or any of the details of it. Have you already Speed made arrangements for the exhum exhumation of Jacob's body with Ransom Funeral Home? I didn't hear your question, uh, Mr. Westerholm. Have you already made arrangements with Ransom Funeral Home for the exhumation? Mr. Westerholm, I told you I'm not making any comment regarding the Lumberios investigation. Uh, Mr. Henry, would you would you give uh, would you let John Wookie speak with me today? I'm sorry, sir? Would you let John Wookie speak with us today? Sir, if you want to talk to me about the... Not, not to you, Dean Henry. To, to, would you let John Wookie talk to us today? I'd like, I'd like to finish answering your question, Mr. Lumberius. I, I told you previously, uh, in person, in Mr. McGookie's office, that if you want to speak to me regarding this investigation, if you have questions... I don't want to speak to you. No. I want to speak to John Wookie. Would you be willing to let him speak with us today? Well, sir, what I've given is advice to people not to make public comment regarding the investigation because I'm concerned about the integrity. So you won't. Are you going to let me finish? Go ahead, Dean. Please go ahead, Mr. Henry. The, the answer to your question, Mr. Lumerius, is I've advised the people that I advise, which include Dr. Wilkie, not to make any public comment regarding this investigation. To the extent that I can do that, I want to preserve the integrity of the investigation. We've already had witnesses who are no longer available to us. We've had at least one witness who's reported being intimidated, scared by conduct of others. I'm not going to contribute to that. So I have advised any everyone that I'm responsible for advising and everyone that's working with me on this case not to make any public comment regarding the investigation. I'm going to continue to render that advice right up until the day the investigation is complete. Is After that, people are free to do what they choose to do. But until then, my advice has remained consistent. Is Detective O'Connell disregarding your advice, given that he went uh, for a 72-minute interview with Brady Gasser, in which he spoke at length, in detail, about your investigation? Is he disregarding your advice Try about the public comment? I told you. I'm not going to make any comment. I realize that, sir. Yes. I, I realize that you've said that, and you've said that people associated with your investiga investigation aren't going to make comment, but yet they do. And so my question is, is he disregarding your advice about making public comment about his investigation, which he has indicated is complete? I'm only going to do this one last time, Mr. You're going to avoid I'm answering the question, sir. I'm not making any comment of any kind whatsoever regarding the course or conduct of this investigation until the investigation is concluded. I've asked you about the contradictory public comments Detective O'Connell has made. Don't you think, since those comments have been made, that they should be cleared up?
Has Detective O'Connell been reprimanded for disregarding your uh, orders to not comment publicly on this case? I told you that I'm not making any comment regarding the investigation. Uh, I'm not asking about the investigation. I'm asking if Detective O'Connell has been reprimanded for making public comment. Please don't interrupt me. Please. All right. Can you give the Limberioses a timetable as to when your investigation will be complete? Mr. Henry, uh, please don't hang up. Okay. I think Mr. Henry is hung up. Um, why don't we take a short break and we'll come back after this message from Terra Community State College. Get in touch with your inner scientist. Transfer degrees in science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine at Terra State Community College. Start here, go anywhere. Learn more at terra.edu. Are you the only one still using the book? Get found at firelands411.com. Half of the internet users today will use a search engine to find a business. Make sure you're found at firelands411.com, an all-local business directory with phone numbers, addresses, and more. Your customers are looking for you. Claim your free listing today at firelands411.com. Find your passion in healthcare at Terra State Community College. Start here, go anywhere. Learn more at terra.edu. All right, we're back. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. We just finished a conversation with Special Prosecutor Dean Henry, and he was his normal uh, ebullient self, I would say. Uh, did we get any? Did you get any uh, satisfaction from that conversation with Mr. Henry? None at all. None. You seem to want to talk directly with Dr. John Wookie. Yeah. Um, who, who who ordered my son to be dug up? John Wookie or Dean Henry? That's a good question. Uh, and Mr. Henry refused to uh, say whether he would allow that. It's, it seems apparent he won't allow that. Uh, Dr. Wookie ruled your son's death a, a suicide that might have been accidental without going to the crime scene or examining the body. He spoke with sheriff's deputies in a phone conversation and made that ruling two and a half hours after Jacob died. What do you think happened March 2nd, 2012? I know what didn't happen, Matt. I'll say this again. With what I know, incontrovertible forensic scientific proof, Jacob could not have been holding that gun. That, that gun isn't, the, the tissue doesn't show tattooing, burning, stippling. That wasn't a 22. That was a 357 Magnum. Mm -hmm. On the Justice for Jake, site right now they I think Luke Eddy just posted uh, a still shot of Jake shooting that gun mm -hmm. with the flame coming out of the end of the barrel mm -hmm. and so the lack of stipling um, indicated to Dr. Wecht that the gun was held more than 18 inches from Jacob's uh, head yes um, and it would have been fired if Jacob had fired that gun it would have been his left hand and he's right-handed, and he would have had to, because of the trajectory of the bullet, he would have had to have been holding the gun something like this, which Dr. Wecht and you believe is physically unlikely beyond uh, being possible. Yep. Um, why do you think this has been such a struggle? Uh, Mike or Shannon, uh, Michael or Shannon, any of you, why do you think this has been such a struggle for 13 months 
to get a uh, more competent investigation and a, a ruling that isn't, as Dr. Weck called it, oxymoronic, uh, an accidental suicide, effectively, is Dr. Wilkie's ruling. Why do you think it's taken so long? It wasn't any of their sons. It wasn't any of their sons. Right. It wasn't. All the roadblocks that they put up, every, every, every thing we've tried to do, they wouldn't do an autopsy. We begged them to do an autopsy. Initially? Data. Yeah. We contacted Ohio State University. And this is months later. They, they give us, they don't do it there at Ohio State University. Um, they refer us to Dr. Weck. Dr. Weck. Dr. Weck does that. We have that done, Matt. Mm -hmm. If I had, if we had the gun, we would have had ballistics or our own testing done on the gun. They wouldn't allow us to take possession of that. They yeah. weren't doing it. They weren't doing it. The retrieval of the bullet. The only reason O'Connell and Zach Zender went out there that day to retrieve that bullet is because we told them we were going to have our people. We're going to have to hire someone to go in there and retrieve that bullet. And that was, was six out. months later. Yeah. Uh, detectives initially at the crime scene did not retrieve the bullet. Um, it's been suggested that detec detectives threw away blood spattered evidence, although uh, the sheriff's office explained that it was the witness who threw out the blood spattered evidence in front of a deputy, which I, I don't know what the difference is there exactly, and as Dean Henry just stated, he's not commenting on that question. As far as I know, Matt, we're the only ones who ever interviewed, there's a taped interview, our investigators that we had to hire, of Evan, that's not on, it's not been released yet, mm -hmm. but that, that exists. This is a Aren't person who was in the home? This is one of the witnesses, this is one of the three kids. Right. I would think Dean Henry would want to talk to me, or let John Wookie, no, you contact me. You want, are you, do you want to know what, What's said on that interview? I mean, and he hasn't. You, you've indicate you've tried to indicate to him that that's available, and he hasn't. I don't know if he knows it exists or not. I don't. I mean, as far as I know, what I'm saying, Matt, is that's the. That's one of the other things that we had to do. Um, we had investigators. We hired them. They went out. They got an interview with Evan. I don't believe Sandusky County. I don't know of one that exists. I, you know, uh, we've done done everything. I've given them everything except that interview with uh, one of the witnesses. Yes. Um, what What do you think the importance of that interview is to their investigation? To this investigation? To this investigation? How can they do a thorough investigation if? One of the witnesses has not yet been spoken to by any of them. Um, How are they going to convince us that this is something else with what's been presented to them? And these are perhaps some questions that you would have asked Dean yeah. Henry if he had been open to taking the questions um, as I thought we had arranged. Obviously there was a miscommunication, but the emails seem relatively clear, although the messages from the special prosecutor have also been contradictory uh, from my perspective. Um, so I'm sorry there was some confusion, Mr. Henry, as, as to what we were doing. We were hoping uh, the Limberiosis would have an opportunity to get some of these questions he knew answered. What he was doing. Um, you are aware what some of these questions are now. Uh, you have been aware of what these questions have been. Um, do you think he'll be able to establish a timetable for completing this investigation? I mean, where do we go with the, where do you go with the, the order for a second exhumation? I think you're... They need to test the tissue sample first. Mm -hmm. Like Mike said, we, we're not trying to hide anything. Mm -hmm. if it's she very sees, painful. If mm -hmm. she sees something, you, or at least ask Lucas, ask Dr. Cynthia, Cynthia Beiser, Beiser. If, uh, if, there, if she really believes that there would be any evidentiary value in digging Jacob, that's good enough for me too. And I think um, Mr. McGookie asked Cynthia Beiser that this morning and she declined to respond to that question, which is understandable. It's not her role to speak with the public in that way. She's a deputy coroner. 
Um, Who do we ask for that then, Matt? Well, Dr. John Wookie, you mentioned that he has not provided you any response to your inquiries either, either immediately after he ruled it a suicide that might have been accidental or since then. And it's been our experience as, as journalists that Dr. Wookie never returns inquiries of, of a, a matter of public uh, related to his job. Um, what would you want to ask Dr. Wookie? The first thing I would ask him is it him or Dean Henry wanting to dig my son up? That's the very first question I would ask him. So perhaps uh, Mr. Henry could be writing these questions down and, and get the answers for you. Why don't we take a short break and we'll come back in just a few moments and wrap this up. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. Get in touch with your inner scientists. Transfer degrees in science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine at Terra State Community College. Start here, go anywhere. Learn more at terra.edu. Are you the only one still using the book? Get found at firelands411.com. Half of the internet users today will use a search engine to find a business. Make sure you're found at firelands411.com, an all-local business directory with phone numbers, addresses, and more. Your customers are looking for you. Claim your free listing today at firelands411.com. Find your passion in healthcare at Terra State Community College. Start here, go anywhere. Learn more at terra.edu. And, and Dan, you chime in if you want. We're back. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. Um, we've talked for a little bit, and uh, Mike and Shannon and Michael, um, you're going to provide questions for Dean Henry that it, since he's unable to answer them today, it'll give, this will give him an opportunity to consider them, and perhaps you can arrange for a private meeting with him. Michael, what questions do you have uh, for Dean Henry? Why, why is this taking so long? Why is this taking so long? What, what, I don't understand. I mean, we live this every day. Every day. Why? Is it, is it you think we're going to give up? I mean, do you think we're going to stop? Do you think they're going to give up? Shannon? Yeah, we're not going away. I, don't, I just don't understand the delay. We're not going anywhere. And, and what is it that you want? Uh, what is it that you want from this investigation? We want the death certificate changed to what it should be. And they're having troubles figuring out what to put on the death certificate. If they can't use suicide, right? What do they change it to, man? Doctor Weck believes it's a homicide. Uh, so that's a question. If, if, if Mr. Henry, I believe the question for Mr. Limberios is, if you cannot rule this a suicide, what will you rule it? And what are the possibilities of what? And what are the possibilities of what it might be ruled? What other questions can you think of for Mr. Henry to give him an opportunity to consider them and, and answer them for you at a at a later date that'll hopefully be soon? My obvious question is why. Why do another autopsy when there's still tissue samples that could be tested? Why do another autopsy when the tissue samples that are in the possession of Sandusky County officials have not been tested? I think that's a good question. Um, you, you are going to oppose uh, the order for an autopsy. Yes. And I believe that the Ohio Revised Code is a little bit vague. Uh, it states that a coroner can, may, order an autopsy, but it doesn't state that that order has to be followed, uh, and you're going to oppose this in court in a filing that you hope to have heard on Thursday. Yes. Uh, Mr. Henry, will you delay the autopsy uh, so that this matter can be adjudicated in the court? 
the question of whether a, a second exhumation uh, happens. I mean, that sounds like a question you want to ask. I don't want to put yeah. words no, in your you, mouth. No, it's a very important question to us right now. What other questions can you think of? They didn't have that much evidence to go over. This shouldn't take that long. They destroyed most of the evidence or didn't collect it or... or there is no reason that it should be taken this long for us to get an answer. There wasn't that much collected that night. They didn't. There's not that much to look at, Matt. So perhaps the question is, why is it taking so long? Yeah, I, it's it's and absurd. What evidence is being examined since the tissue sample was not examined? Uh, I mean, does yeah, that work? That's. Again, I don't want to put words in. I'm just trying to understand your questions and provide them to Special Prosecutor Dean Henry as he requested. Uh, any other questions you can think of? There's probably a million that we'll, we'll think mm -hmm. about here, man. I don't want to put you on the spot. Uh, take a few moments to consider them. We can move on and talk about the rally on Thursday at Sandusky County Courthouse. I think it's 128 Park. We have some questions from the audience. Uh, just one. Jason Worley is here with us today, producer Between the Lines. We have an interactive chat audience. Jason. Uh, just one question asking if the family intends to block the exhumation or if they can do that. I, I think you're filing a motion. Yes, in, in, uh, in court. Seeking to stop the exhumation. Yes. Uh, not, not preventing e it. Everything else needs to be done first. Not preventing it, Matt. Mm -hmm. Just test the, sim test the tissue sample have their pathologists give us a, a reason or what what purpose they would have to to do this again so I, I guess one question might be and again I don't want to put words in your mouth is why wasn't the tissue sample tested as Dean Henry indicated to you it would be tested detective O'Connell went to Pittsburgh to pick up that sample yes he indicated in his 72-minute interview with Brady Gasser, if you can call it that, that the evidentiary value of that tissue sample was compromised because it was stored in formaldehyde. Dr. Weck has suggested that that is scientifically unsound, but Dean Henry is not responding to that contradictory information provided by Mr. Henry and Detective O'Connell. So why was the tissue sample not tested. Are there other questions you can think of? And you can you can get back to them. Jason, are there any other questions in the chat room? No. Why don't we talk about the rally on Thursday at 9 a.m. at Sandusky County Courthouse? You mentioned Brady Gasser and the other person? Luke Eddy. Luke Eddy yeah. have developed this Facebook page and yeah. this, this campaign called Justice for Jake. Yep. There's a petition drive on the Facebook page. Yes. And it, the last I looked, it had 2,000 signatures. Do you know how many signatures it has now? I haven't looked, man. 2,300. Um, 2,300. And the petition asks Attorney General Mike DeWine to take over and conduct an independent investigation, independent of Sandusky County officials, a, a wholly independent investigation. Mr. DeWine, Attorney General DeWine, has declined to take that step, indicating to you and to the register in response to its inquiries that the Attorney General is prohibited from stepping into a law enforcement matter without an invitation from law enforcement officials in that county. How do you think his mind will be changed by the petition? Do you think it can be changed? It worked in Steubenville. Um, that, that incident, uh, again. Steubenville, you're mentioning the Steubenville yeah. rape case, uh, which made national headlines just a few months ago, included, uh, the sexual assault of a female who was under, uh, the influence of something, and there were photographs taken. Uh, of this young woman being carted from one place to the other. Initially, law enforcement officials uh, declined, I believe, to investigate it more fully. 
a campaign uh, happened and DeWine did become involved. Do you know if he was invited in by local officials at any point? I don't know. I don't believe he was. Man, I, I believe know. he stepped in. Yeah. So why and, can't he? And Mr. DeWine, uh, in that instance, Attorney General DeWine, made very strong statements about holding law enforcement officials accountable and that sexual assault was a very serious crime. I'm sure he feels the same way about homicide, that it also is a very serious crime. He seems legitimately uh, constrained in some way. That's what he's indicated to us. Dean Henry has declined to invite BCI to conduct an independent uh, investigation. Detective O'Connell uh, told me and attorney Dan McGookie that he would request that independent investigation. I believe he told us that on a Friday, but on Monday he reported to Sheriff Kyle Overmeyer that he had never told us that. So that was another contradictory statement. Who do you think will be at the rally on Thursday? We're hoping for a good turnout. We, 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 I, I You'll think be you're going to be there. Yeah. Uh, the Register will be covering the rally live at Sandusky County Courthouse beginning at 9 p.m. I think we're planning to get there at 8, 8 a.m. Sorry, 9 a.m. is when it happens. 8 a.m. is when we expect to be there. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, when the body was first exhumed, did anything prevent the special prosecutor from obtaining tissue samples at that time for the prosecutor's own analysis? Was there anything preventing him from obtaining the tissue samples back in September? Not no. That, not that we know of. I mean, Dr. Wecht saved, saved them. For right. a reason. And Dr. Wecht was on Between the Lines last week, I believe. That program is available for demand <coughs> viewing at SanduskyRegister.com. I think very clearly you would like Special Prosecutor Dean Henry to answer the question why the tissue sample that he did finally request and indicated would be tested was not tested. Uh, also, it seems you'd like to, a timetable. Yeah. You'd like uh, to know um, whether the, the hearing, the rally is on Thursday at Sandusky County uh, Courthouse, Park Avenue. Is it Park Avenue in Fremont? Park Road? They can go on the Justice for Jake website. It's all right there. There's a map get directions. available. Yeah. There are also links to that Facebook page from the stories at SanduskyRegister.com. Why didn't Dean Henry <coughs> take samples during the first exhumation? Is, 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 why didn't he ask for them then? Um, that's, that's he was, Jake wasn't exhumed until we paid Dr. Wecht. Well, I mean, they're in September. And, and your um, attorney, Mr. McGookie, fully made Dean Henry aware at that time that if county officials continued to refuse to conduct an autopsy, that it would force the family to conduct their own. Correct. And we I think at that time, Mr. Henry indicated that that was a decision the family would have to make. Uh, I'm not sure. Was that he involved at that time? Tom Steyerwalt. Yeah. Tom Steyerwalt, Sandusky County Prosecutor. This is before Dean Henry was appointed to be both the defense counsel <coughs> in the civil litigation and the special prosecutor in the criminal investigation. Matt, if I could point out, attach that motion that you have there in front of you, which you're going to file today, uh, seeking a court order blocking a second exhumation unless there's a, some valid reason stated for it. There's uh, uh, six emails that I sent to Tom Steyerwald in May of 2012, literally begging him to do an autopsy. He refused. So it, was, it wasn't until September, mid-September, that we were forced to contact Ohio State University, and they put us in touch with Dr. Wecht. So that's what happened. At that point in time, it was uh, Tom Steyerwald. And I believe that uh, Detective O'Connell, in, in a conversation that he had with Mr. McGookie and I, indicated the reason there was no autopsy initially was the expense. Is that right, Dan, if you recall that? I don't think he ever said a reason. He just refused. 
I think, well, I think uh, Detective O'Connell suggested okay. that Wilkie's decision was related to the expense of an autopsy. Dean well, Henry, we were told, we Dean, were t Dean Dean Henry billed county taxpayers $8,500 last month for his services, and now they are uh, seeking uh, an autopsy in any event. Bill Kaiser, uh, the first investigator put on the case by uh, Tom Steyerwalt, told us that an autopsy was used to determine how someone died and that how Jake died was obvious. So basically wasn't needed. When we had to make the decision to have Jake exhumed the first time, that was a horrible decision that we, we sat down as a family and had to make him have. Dan there. wanted us to, he was pushing us for months to do it, and we kept dragging our feet because and it was such a painful decision and they, they, to make. They told us that if we ever wanted to know, Ohio State University, I think, said not, you, you would have to make this decision now because time is of the essence. Um, it didn't look like I was getting any answers anywhere else. We sat down as a family and made a hard decision, Matt, the first time to do this. And now you're faced with a decision being forced on you to do it at this late date. Dean Henry had indicated previously that he didn't believe there would be a lot of value to a second autopsy. Is that correct? That's what I'm aware of. And I've asked him subsequently since the exhumation order uh, was produced yesterday, you know, why he had an about face on that okay. issue, if indeed it was an about face. He has declined to comment on that matter. Um, and that is another contradictory statement. So I know, Mr. Henry, that you're not interested in questions from me, but I've asked you repeatedly to help us understand the contradictory statements that are being made uh, from Detective O'Connell and yourself. Um, again, you're welcome not to comment, but the questions have value regardless of your decision not to answer them or provide non-responsive replies to those questions. Is there anything else that you'd like to address to Mr. Henry, Dr. Wookie, uh, Sheriff Overmeyer? Uh, I imagine that they will review this program. Uh, they're big readers of the Sandusky Register, I understand. Yeah. Is there, let me, we should finish up here in a few minutes. Uh, is there, I guess the rally tomorrow. Um, Thursday. Thursday, the rally on Thursday at Sandusky County Courthouse at 9 a.m. Um, that might be one of the least difficult things that you have to do in the past 13 months. Yeah. You'll be surrounded by people who support your cause. Uh, the hearing is scheduled for 9.30. Uh, this motion to quash the movement for a second, uh, a second exhumation is Dan will it be ruled on tomorrow or is it just being presented? Well, it'll be Thursday. We're uh, no, I, I mean, I can't speak for the court as to when it would rule. We're asking because of the emergency nature, you know, of the relief we're asking for, and that is a court order blocking any second exhumation until they can at least articulate a valid reason. Uh, I talked to Dr. Beiser this morning, the would be pathologist, and and she said she hasn't even reviewed the, the tissue sample. Okay. Uh, so we're saying, why not at least give the tissue sample to Dr. Beiser? Uh, there's no affidavit from Dr. Beiser saying that a second autopsy would be of any value at all. And Dean Henry indicated that same thing previously, that uh, he doubted the value of a second autopsy. Exactly. Again, he's yeah. not an expert in forensic pathology, neither am I. He, he does seem to have... Um, some expertise in some fields, including journalism. Mike, I, Shannon, I, Michael, go ahead. I, I called Mike DeWine this morning and, and, and bagged him. Just to, I, I told him about the sample, about what they're wanting to do to my son. Um, I left him a voicemail. Uh, hopefully he'll call me back just to help us in, in some way. Maybe not step in with the investigation, which we'd love to see done, Matt. But this small step here of them digging up Jake, just 
make them slow down and at least test the sample, at least give us some kind of indication what, what evidentiary value it would be to dig him up again. Um, Attorney General uh, Mike DeWine was invited to be on this program. Uh, the invitation didn't go out until early this morning. He declined uh, to be on the program, although uh, Mr. DeWine has been on Between the Lines in the past, and we hope to arrange uh, for him to discuss this case at some point in the future. Certainly the petition drive seeks his attention to this matter, um, so it remains to be seen whether Mr. DeWine's office will get involved in a broader way. Uh, his office through the BCI already has been involved, uh, providing testing of some nature, which is being withheld by Dean Henry, the results, although the Attorney General's office indicated to me this morning that they would provide those public records that they had previously provided to uh, Dean Henry and his investigatory team. I think that's what... Uh, the information uh, that the Attorney General's office provided me through a spokesman. Uh, and we will, of course, post those documents online at SanduskyRegister.com and any reports online at SanduskyRegister.com appropriate to the continuing news coverage. We've also asked Dean Henry uh, to secure all the tape recordings that uh, Detective O'Connell had made in the process of his investigation, including the tape recording of the conversation he had with uh, Brady Gasser. Uh, he has already uh, responded to that public records request by stating that those would not be public records. Um, I've indicated to him that uh, I don't think that's accurate and there would have to be some sort of ruling before he can decide whether it was be a public record. I've asked him to secure those tapes and any tapes that were made during the course of this investigation so that a judge could rule whether they're part of the public record. I, I guess, is there anything else that you would like to tell our audience? Uh, I just hope that a lot of people show up to the protest Thursday so that this can never happen to another family. No other family has to go through what we're going through ever again. This is this has been a, a nightmare. Shannon? We're still waiting for the phone to ring. We're still waiting for an answer. It's a long wait. Michael? It's been a long time. Okay. Well, maybe uh, after the rally, uh, we'll get some movement. We'll move forward. And uh, the Register will continue covering this story as best we can. Uh, thank you for being with us here at Between the Lines today. Uh, our guest next week is remains to be seen.